City of America Business Connect, where we connect your business to what's important. Today, our topic for discussion will be living a debt-free life. How creating a healthy personal management, money management system can work both in your household and on your business. As we try to fight and combat this um, pandemic that we're in today and try to make our businesses address those needs of customers and also balance our financial gains and revenue, we have a time, we have a chance to step back and take a look and reassess our financial goals and our financial situation, whether it be home, personal, or whether it be business. The question that must be asked and answered today is, are we financially prepared to withstand any calamity that comes around, whether it's in your personal life or whether it's in your business world? And are we ready to live a debt-free life? I have today as our I have today as our guest panelist today we have Mr. Greg Fetterman and we have Mr. Richard Schaefer. They're both Mr. Richard Schaefer is the CEO and founder of Prestige Equity Group and Mr. Schaefer is the director of the branch. Greg, how are you today? Hey, Mr. How are you doing? I am fine. I'm glad to have you on as a guest today, sir. Um, I'd like you guys to tell a little bit about yourself and um, and we'll go from there, okay? Just tell us a little bit, more. let's get to know you a little bit more. Sure. Uh, I'm Greg Fetterman. I'm a life insurance agent, but I'm also an agent for United Financial Freedom, helping people get out of debt as quick as possible in as little as five to 10 years, depending on their situation. Um, <clears throat> Richard is uh, one of the national directors and one of the trainers and product specialists for United Financial Freedom. And go ahead, Richard. Well, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. It's a privilege to be here. And Greg, I, I greatly appreciate the opportunity for you to, to make this uh, occasion possible for all of us. And uh, Johnny, it's a pleasure. I had a chance to meet you just briefly on the phone today. And uh, you're you're up to big things, and you're you're really a stand for people in the business community. And so it's a pleasure to be on your show today. Pleasure to have you. Um, well, Greg, you and I met because of the um, Chamber of Commerce, the Pember, the Mar Maramar and Pembroke Pines Chamber of Commerce. We met there, which is a great referral group organization. And any business person out there, um, you may want to look into. Um, joining one of your chamber of commerce um, referral groups. It's where businesses come together and they can collaborate and they can work with each other and they can bring about business and help each other's businesses out by referrals as well. So that's where I met Greg from. Greg was an eye. Greg impressed me. You, you impressed me so much when you um, when you speak at the referral groups about your passion and how you want to see uh, personal people in their personal finances become debt free and how that translates over to even their business owners as well those same those same habits that they develop those same um magnitudes of how they spend and how they watch money and how they manage money manage works not only in personal life but also in their business world so when you explain it to me i had to have you on the show <laughs> so thank you. Um, one of the things that I know that that I have that I have faced in my life is my mom used to tell me back a while ago, you have champagne taste and beer money. Okay? You know, I like to buy expensive things. And you know, sometimes my money doesn't say that, but I want it anyway. Uh, I find that be the I find that to be the best um, habits of most, most consumers today. How would you talk to me if I come to your office and I say, you know, I want to be out of debt, but I still want to get this Cadillac over here <laughs> I'm in for a long time. Um, the car I have is just fine; it's just old for me. <laughs> it's, you know, how do you? How does that mindset change? How 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 does that? Johnny, it's funny you say that because uh, many years ago when I graduated high school, uh, you know, and of course, I probably didn't listen to a lot of the great advice I was given by my elders, like all kids. 
Mm -hmm. I remember profoundly my, my German grandfather said something very powerful that, that just now resonates with me many years now as I'm an adult. And he said, you know, the problem with most young people today is they buy things they don't need with money they don't have to impress people they don't even know. And I think with the advent and the explosion of the internet and social media and all the extreme marketing efforts, you know, we do an insane job of getting people to want exactly that desire. But unfortunately, we don't understand the relationship between the choices we make and the long-term consequences that they lead to. And that's really one of the things that our system does that is truly unique and extraordinary in the industry. Uh, and it's one of the reasons why, Johnny, we referred to this when we spoke a little bit earlier. And I, I, I guess I would take credit for this, but uh, many years ago, we first launched this technology uh, back in about 2005. We did what we call a beta test in a specific city in Denver, Colorado. And of course, technology was a lot more rudimentary than it is now, right? It's almost hard to believe, but 15 years ago, you know, there weren't any smartphones, right? There was no social media. There certainly wasn't WebEx and things of that nature. Um, so I have no idea how we did as well as we did, but there was something that we talked about that really resonated on a powerful fundamental level. You know, we all know at a, at a very core basis, even a biblical basis, if you will, that debt and being a slave to debt is a huge problem. Unfortunately, in the United States, we've mastered the idea of financing everything, which is why we don't really think of the cost of anything anymore. Our parents didn't buy something, a refrigerator or a TV until they could pay cash. Now we figure what's the monthly payment. And that's really a dynamic that's been exploded over the last 20, 30 years. And a lot of marketing has created that opportunity with the advent of leasing cars and other things of that nature. We lease everything. We basically rent everything. And one of our goals is to help people get away from ownership of their money Ooh. and get into ownership of their money. Wow. And our entire fundamental premise of our program, and, and I'll say this humbly, but after 30 years in the industry, Every vertical there is, insurance, securities, uh, you know, mortgage, real estate. I've been a planner advisor. I collected 13 licenses, goodness sakes, at one point because I was so intent upon if I could just educate them more. I grew up just outside of Detroit. You know, it's not an affluent area. Everybody I knew worked in construction, the auto industry, and it taught me a great work ethic. But everybody I knew had a bad back from that kind of labor and was struggling with money. And it's not because they didn't work hard. Far from it. And it's not because they were they were naive or they were stupid. They just didn't fundamentally understand how money worked. And, you know, when you think about this, Johnny, I'm sure you, like a lot of my friends, you know, were involved in sports in some level or maybe even a game. I don't care if it's Monopoly. But we're all forced to play what really amounts to be the money game. The problem is we don't know the rules. And there isn't any game or any sport that we would participate in that if we didn't know the rules, that we could be competitive, much less win. And the exact same thing happened. So when I saw that early on in my life and was exposed to a lot of money principles and so forth, just something as simple as the rule of 72, you know, the time value of money, how long it takes to compound money. I, honestly, Johnny, I became so I was I was getting the Wall Street Journal in middle school. I'm not even sure I can even understand it, but I was possessed that somehow I was going to be the first person in my family to move out of state, to start my own business, to go to college, whatever the case may be. And. So I would literally be at drywall on the drywall at coffee breaks in my dad's construction business showing the rule of 72 and if people save money and it was 25 or $50 a month. And I was, I was passionate about it. And for years I would sit across people across the kitchen table and I'd be like, Johnny, you and your wife, this is what you got to do. And I would spend hours and I would, I was so felt so good about it. But guess what would happen about a month or two later, they'd see a shiny new car on the highway or a commercial for a trip to Disney. And just like that, that whole plan went right up in smoke. And I thought, well, maybe I just need to learn more so I can teach more and I can educate more. And I was convinced that just knowing more would solve the problem. But here's what I learned. Knowing doesn't matter. Doing matters, right? Every January 1st, and we talked a little bit about this earlier, right? There are two top New Year's resolutions each and every year. Johnny, what are they? They are wait. And get out of debt. You got it. It's fitness and finance. <laughs> lose weight, get in shape, get out of debt and save money. Now, as we talked about, the reason that they're the same ones every year is because they're important, but it's also because they're elusive. We continue to struggle with actually getting success in those areas. Now, think about this in a, for a moment. Here's how easy it is to lose weight. Eat less, exercise more. Sounds like a pretty simple concept, right? 
but it's just not that easy. It's not just lack of discipline and marketing and so forth. The same idea with money, spend less and save more. What's so complicated? So what happens is we are flooded with information on the internet. We're with systems and strategies and ideas and concepts and seminars and podcasts and all that's great. But at the end of the day, results is where the rubber meets the road. And so we decided to do is what if we could find a way to literally create the equivalent of GPS for money, a system, a web-based system that could tell you to the penny, to the day, exactly which debt to pay off, how much and when, with two primary objectives. With every dollar we have, every day you have it until you spend it, the system evaluates how it can eliminate the most amount of interest and pay off the most amount of debt at the same time. Now, I'll give you a, an example that we can all relate to. I live in, in Boca Raton, Florida. So I'm in Palm Beach, maybe about you know 45 minutes north of Miami on the water here. My mom lives in Sarasota. Now, I've been there 100 times, Johnny, so I know exactly where she lives. I know exactly where I live. But every time I go to visit her, I still get in my car and I click mom's house for my GPS. Now, it's not because I don't know how to get there, but here's what I learned over time. And I think we all do it instinctively. I'm always running late because I'm busy. And my mom's always wants to make me dinner when I come. So I'm always pressed for time. And she would always say, well, Richard, you know, what time are you going to be here? It's almost like having kids again when kids are like, are we there yet, dad? Now my mom's like, are you there yet? And I would guess, I'd be like, yeah, mom, I'll be there an hour or two. Well, GPS has changed that, right? Because in the world of utopia, where there's no weather, which is never going to happen in Florida, there's no traffic. That's also not going to happen. No car accidents. That's never no happened. railroad crossing. That's not going to happen either. No <laughs> railroad crossings. Uh, I don't ever have to stop and go to the bathroom. I never need gas and I never have to eat. Okay, well, if that was the case, but that's not life. Real life is there are car accidents and all those things we talked about. But what does GPS do? In real time, it recalculates your ETA. So when yeah, my mom yeah. calls and says, Rich, when are you going to be there? I'm like, Mom, I'll be there in 47 minutes. Now imagine the same principle financially. Imagine if Johnny, you uh, were sitting down and I'm like, Johnny, this is your plan. And this is the analysis. This is a spreadsheet and the illustration. And if you do everything exactly like I say, and nothing changes, you'll be here in 20, 30 years. Well, okay. But what's the flaw in that? Everything changes. Income changes all the time, especially in economic tragedies like we're having right now. And if you've got children, expenses change about five times a day. So because those things are always moving, even if we're not intending to be over budgeted or buying a new Cadillac or whatever it may be, we're constantly in this ebb and flow. Imagine if there was a system in real time that could tell your ETA or your debt freedom date at any given moment. And every decision you would make in real time would tell you the day, month, and year you'd be out of debt, how much interest you're scheduled to pay, and how much you've currently already saved. And every little decision you make, like that storage unit you have for five years with junk you don't use anymore, that's 150 bucks a month, but we're too lazy to empty it out. We think, what difference could that make? Boom, 1.6 months or 1.6 years. Or what if somebody didn't go to Starbucks every day? Four bucks, five bucks, whatever we want to call it now, right? Boom, seven months. Every little decision, 25, 50, $100 has a profound impact long-term, but now it's visual, Johnny. Now we can actually see it in real time. So that's part of the, the, the general 30,000 foot view of what makes the program so special. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. So, so, so the analysis that you gave us was basically headed for me. Yes. So we directing your habits. So I, like I like that. I, I like that right there. In fact, I think if we were to take that a step further, Johnny, We've all heard of the concept of a paradigm shift, right? right? Unfortunately, until something profound happens, like we lose a parent or mm -hmm. we get divorced or we lose a job and something really hits us upside the head, it doesn't shake us to our core to change, right? So when there's not, until there's enough pain associated with something, we don't change, unfortunately. It's the nature of us as humans, right? Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But when you look at even the example we talked about a few minutes ago about fitness and finance, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what happens there? Everybody has the best of intentions, but 21 days into the new year, everybody's out of the gym already. Now, joining the gym isn't going to make you lose weight. But here's the problem with both money and fitness. You see, we have a very, and I think this goes to a lot of what you talk about with, with your economic development. We have a very dysfunctional relationship with both food and money. We associate eating with pleasure, dieting with pain, spending with pleasure, therefore why it's called retail therapy, 
and saving with pain. <laughs> and the problem is every if that's the belief system, every time there's a struggle, a disappointment, a heartache, a failure, which is only going to be about every week of our lives, we go right back to what short term gives us pleasure, food mm -hmm. or spending. So until something fundamentally shifts that occurring, it won't change. But when you see in real time, mm -hmm. I'll give an example. Let's say Greg was going to buy, I don't know, a new jet ski right. and it's $8,000. And but he comes home and tells his wife, well, honey, it's only $175 a month because, of course, everybody wants to sell you on payment. Our system says, hold on, Greg. It's really going to cost you $13,427.11, even if you paid cash, because that is now the opportunity cost associated with making that purchase decision as opposed to dedicated to debt service. That changes the outlook real fast because you're like, it might have been worth $175 a month, maybe even eight grand, but it's not worth $13,000 and adding years to my payoff date of my debt, especially when we get older. Imagine how many people in their 50s and 60s right now have recently refinanced to a 30-year mortgage, Johnny. Right. What kind of plan is that? They're going to be 85 or 90, still paying a mortgage? And that's one of the things, because as Americans, we've started to wave the white flag. We've conceded that we're just never going to get out of debt, so we're just going to ride it out as long as we can. That's not a strategy, and there's no hope behind that. So when you're able to see visually in real time. In fact, imagine if... And I haven't thought of how to do this yet, Johnny, but if I ever do, I'm going to be retired living on an island. But let's say that I had a magic fork. And every single time I took a bite of food, there was a little gauge on there that told me exactly how many calories that bite of food represented. And then I could turn it over. That. Be and that's, that's what I said. Yeah. Don't write that down. That's my idea, right? Okay. <laughs> and then you turn over the other side of that fork, and it's going to show you a picture of exactly what you're going to look like if you continue to eat that way in 90 days. Oh, wow. Now, that, again, if I ever figure that out, but that's that would because that would change it because in real time, now you might want one bite of chocolate <laughs> cake, but not five. So right. we do the same thing with money. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. But I'm still going to pay. Yes, but <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I, do, I do see what exactly what you're saying. Um, my question to both of you is um, what are some of the remedies um, to combat that kind of thinking? Because for, I understand a 30 day when you practice on 30 days, it becomes a habit. Um, but how, how do you shift your, your, your thinking on that? How, how, when you have someone who's always, always had the idea that if I see it and I want it, I'm going to get it. Oh, or, that's, that's, it's or, hard. Or Old habits are hard to break, right? Right. So my, my, my thing is this all theoretically this all sounds wonderful. Sounds great because, because because we make the resolutions on the first of the year because we truly, first of all, believe we can do it. Exactly. And we truly believe that it's gonna be better for us. Mm -hmm. But the thing is is that old habits come back. And when we're trying, how do you pause your system? Well let's let's take the example I gave a minute ago, that magic fork that we're both going to try to create, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's say that in addition to that, mm -hmm. there was a little red light on there that said, oh, if you keep eating that way, you're going to have a heart attack in six months. Okay. Now, we're able to do the same thing with money. Now, the whole fact is none of us, we always have the age-old thing, right? If we knew the day we were going to die, would we really want to know, mm -hmm. okay? But like, what's the Christmas past story where he actually sees his life and sees the impact of the decisions he made? That's what changes him, right? It's not people telling him he should be nicer. It's not getting older. No, he's actually able to see in real time throughout this dream, three scenarios of how his life, his choices is going to, and it scares him straight. And one of the things that happens, I think, with debt is when we can push it away and it's just a $100 payment, it's just a $200 payment, it's just a little bit, we can just push it off into the future. But when you're looking at that face to face and you go, I'm, I had a client, and I'll keep their names anonymous, but I had a client that was 62 years old, still fairly young, but she lost her husband about two and a half years ago. And she had about, I think they'd refinanced right before her husband died, and, and nothing wrong with that. But she had about 26, 27 years left on a 30-year mortgage, and she was 62. So that was going to bring her to like 90, right? And she had no idea. Well, I'm just going to pay for as long. I'm going to probably have to work till I'm about 70 or so. And I'm going to, you know, downsize. 
that's not the dream, right? So right. we sat down without making her refinance again, without changing her budget in any specific way, without increasing her minimum monthly payments. In about 30 minutes, we were able to do an analysis. We didn't need her social security number. We didn't need her account numbers. We need the basic information regarding her debts, the debts, the interest rates, the payments, the balances, her income frequency, just the basic metrics there. And we were able to show her that we were going to have every debt she had, including her mortgage, paid off in 7.8 years. That's that means she would be right. yes. yes. So now all of a sudden, she's going to be 69. Honestly, she was bawling on the phone. I, I, I was teary-eyed. I was thinking of my own mom, right? And all of a sudden, she said, you've given me hope again. And listen, and she was crying because she lost her husband. So she goes, I lost hope. She goes, you gave me hope. And I'll tell you this right now. One of the things that's so sad about this pandemic, wasn't even going to share this, but a good friend of mine committed suicide during this period of time. Wow. Uh, lost his job. Felt, you know, sometimes as men, right. as flawed as we are, we tend to define ourselves a lot about our ability to support our family and, and, and produce, right? And all of a sudden, it just, and he probably had some, you know, instability issues to some degree and, and, and struggled with depression a little bit for sure. But all of a sudden, just his business failing, his whole self worth was predicated. And he just gave up. And I think about that movie, it's one of my favorites, uh, Shawshank Redemption. Yes. And there's that phenomenal scene in the court in the in the in the, the courtyard there of the prison where Timothy Robbins is speaking to uh uh, uh my favorite one of my favorite actors of all time. Um I know you're talking about Morgan. Morgan Morgan, Morgan, Morgan Friedman. Morgan. I'm always thinking of Samuel Jackson, it's that Morgan Friedman. And he says, I think I've given up hope. And he said, hope isn't just a good thing. It's maybe the best of things. And I think one of the things that we do, yes, we've got great software. The technology is great. The system's proven. All that's wonderful. And for fear of being touchy-feely, what we really, truly give people back, and more than what I did when I was just in the insurance business, more than when I was just in the mortgage business or the real estate business or any of the business, I was offering tools and products and so forth. And I did good by people, I hope. But I'm giving them hope that they can actually be out of debt. And it's not the being out of debt. It's when I was, if I was to sit to you, Johnny, and I said, Johnny, what's important to you about being out of debt? What would you say? Um, I would say freedom. And what's important to you about having freedom in your life? Freedom to be able to, to move, to, to breathe, to um, have decisions, to make mm -hmm. decisions based on uh, the fact that I have to. But because I want to. And what is important to you about being able to create that kind of opportunity in your life? It's um, that's very important. Um, it's important because it will provide uh, time and space for me to do the things I want. Like, like uh, what? Like maybe travel. Okay. Uh, maybe um, do some. I want an exotic backyard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I like it. Right now it's up concrete. You know, okay. grass. <laughs> and you have any you have any children, any grandchildren? Um I do. I have um I have two I have a son and a daughter. Yes. And how would that change your opportunity to be involved and engaged in their lives? It would be it would give the opportunity to um to be more supportive than them with them more financially support for them if they needed it. Mm -hmm. Um more um because um, I'm already involved emotionally and all the other, but more financial, a more, Absolutely. more that, you know, have maybe a savings saved up or something provided for them to their children. You got or, it. Or to, you know, um, you know uh, to leave some wealth. And then Johnny, that's, that's really that, what it's all about. In other words, reverse what everybody else is doing. Instead of leaving debt, leave wealth. Absolutely. And, and see, this is part of the powerful part of our program, right? Where it, it's not just a a platform it's not just a solution it's that and and i and i know as your listeners are going to hear this this sounds like what we're supposed to say right i know it sounds all cliche -ish, but i'm telling you maybe it was getting older maybe it was losing my dad maybe it was having a daughter but those things begin to shift you and you think a little bit less about having and getting and a little bit more about being and becoming and about contribution and significance and legacy and i will tell you that when you're able to create that kind of opportunity for you, in a moment just a moment, an instant, 
I can revive that sense of hope that somebody has that they can actually, that it's not too late to do what they want to do in life. And I tell you what, there is no more fulfilling experience in the world that you can have than that, because it all comes down to what you said. It's not about getting out of debt. It's the opportunities that being out of debt and not being shackled by that debt could create for you. It's the sense of freedom you'd feel. It's the sense of confidence and trust. Think about how many stresses we have over money. Men, we, we are horrible with stress. And people don't commit suicide over what lotion they use or what shake they drink, right? It's it's not just debt, but it's the lack of money. I'm not blaming every marriage failure on it, every suicide on it, but it certainly is a major contributing factor. So when we can eliminate some of that pressure, and in real time, they feel in control. And I know this is funny, so don't laugh when I say this, okay? GPS was one of the greatest things that was ever invented for men. Here's why. Because we no longer have to feel pressure to have to go to the gas station, ask for directions, have our wives meet us up, right? But they feel like this little computer now is telling me what to do, but I don't really have to ask, right? The exact same dynamic happens with money. All the years I'd sit down with a husband and wife and I'd be like, you know, uh, Johnny, are you and your wife doing, you know, X, Y, and Z? You know what men would always say? Yeah, 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 we're, we're doing that. Wives would say, no, no we're not, not right? No, so now not. I give them control without feeling emasculated. They've yeah. got a program without having a master's degree in finance, without being an expert in the financial arena. Literally, we can level the playing field, turn the tables on the bank, and let the average person bank like a bank at the push of the button. Because the algorithm in our system builds in all these complex systems and strategies the banks have been using against us for right. years. And now we're putting that money actively to work. And we capitalize on four primary principles. Strategic payoff, mm -hmm. okay. interest flow, interest accumulation, and interest cancellation. But the strategic payoff, and I'm not beating up on Dave Rams or anybody. He's a good guy. I know him personally. And I love that he advocates for people getting out of debt. But the idea of just putting money in an envelope and not putting it actively to work is, is like using a map instead of GPS. We're not actively leveraging the use of that money as efficiently as we can to, to get the greatest possible benefit to it. We know that when you put your money in the bank, they don't put in a drawer that says, okay, this is Johnny's money and this is Greg's money. No, no, no. They use that money and they put it to work. In fact, they loan it to other banks in an overnight lending rate of a half percentage point a day. That's 180% a year they make on your money that you get nothing for. So the whole game of our system is how do we help you bank like a bank and literally make it as easy to navigate for as GPS? And at any given moment, it tells you where you are on the trajectory of things. So that's a really important thing. One aspect that I didn't mention, I think is important. When we think about strategic payoff, and I, I talk about Dave Ramsey in this respect, people think, oh, debt roll down or the snowball effect or the highest interest rate. This is why that is not always the most optimum strategy, because we think all interest is created equal, Ooh. and it's not. It's right. only made to appear that way. So theoretically, let's say you had a 3% mortgage, a 3% line of credit, a 3% car loan, and just for argument's sake, a 3% credit card. Now, from the outside appearance, they all look the same, don't they? Mm -hmm. But they're not, because it's not about interest rate. That's actually one of the least important factors. It's how the interest is calculated, how the finance charges are assessed, and how and when the payments are applied. When you have a credit card, if you run up the balance and you pay it off in full before the, before the grace period, how much interest do you pay? Well, zero. The question, though, is did the interest rate that was associated with that credit card matter at all in that situation? No, it could have been a 0% intro rate or 24%. It made no difference because of the way that type of loan works. What about a line of credit, like a, maybe a home equity line of credit? You borrow $10,000 and you pay it all on the first, you pay it all off on the 15th or the 17th or whatever. Well, the interest isn't zero because it doesn't work like a credit card. But now you're only gonna pay average daily balance. So you're no longer paying 3% on 10,000. You're paying 3% on maybe three or 4,000, which is equivalent of about 1%. Once again, interest rate was not the most operative thing. In a car loan, if you've got a $500 payment and maybe 100 goes to interest and 400 goes to principal, it's the same every payment. Guess what loan doesn't work that way, Johnny? A mortgage. So everybody right now is refinancing going, oh, I got a three and a quarter rate, 3%, two and three quarters. It's like free money. I invite every one of your listeners to pull out their truth and lending statement and see how free that money really is because it only looks like 3%. So if you were to take your mortgage statement and you could ignore the principal or the, the, the escrow, tax and insurance, just focus in on the P&I, the principal and interest. And I want you to pull out a calculator and divide the amount of interest into that whole payment. 
That'll tell you how much interest in volume you're actually paying at every payment. And Johnny, that number is going to be 60, 70, maybe even 80% of every payment you make every month that's going 100% of it. Does that look anything like 3% to you? No, because it only schedules that way over the 30-year term. Right. It's front end loaded by default, which is why it takes 21 years to pay off half of a 30-year loan. Well, that don't seem fair. And that's because when the banks came out with these loans, back in the day, we used to have to put pay cash for a house, right? And then you had to put 80% down. The banks would only finance 20%. That had a five-year balloon. Then they finally decided during like the post-war era, we need to come up with long-term right, uh, right. loans. But they, this is something nobody knows. They actually consult with the U.S. Census Bureau the year prior and realized the average person at that time lived in their home 7.2 years. So they decided that they would structure the loan in such a way where it would load as much interest as humanly possible during the entire period of time the average person was expected to live there. Well, wow. ain't that nice? So the whole point is the system is rigged against us. And this is time where now we're going to expose that. And that's why our entire focus, our mission really, is to help buy back America one family at a time. Because if you don't, everybody wants the government to solve the problems. You know how you solve the problem? You start with you and your family, and then the people that are in your community, your neighborhood, your city, your state, and collectively, you can influence the culture of our country. But we've developed such a mentality that we don't take personal responsibility. Now, look what's happening with COVID. This has hurt a lot of businesses bad. And sometimes people forget that business owners are consumers, too. They're yes. households, too. 83% of all businesses are small businesses. They're not General Motors. They're not Oracle. They're not Amazon. They're small mom-and-pop shops with less than 25 employees. That's the backbone of our country. And so yes. when you look at the fact that if we can't help them get straight, and yes, the government's trying to do something short term to help. We're talking about long term impact. We got to get our own financial house in order because when you and I have our own business, our name is personally guaranteed and everything. If our credit's compromised, if our personal home budget's in trouble, we can't help our business either. And if we're in bad shape, not only can't we help ourselves, we can't help anybody else that works for us and that thriving cultural economy in our city that we need. And that's one of the things that you guys really do that's incredible is being a stand for the people in your area to really help small businesses be able to make better decisions and put them in a better position. So I really applaud you for that. Thank you, and I applaud you for being here on the show to give this information to our businesses. Um, and you mentioned and you touched on some very, very great points here. One of the points you pointed out to, and I'm gonna ask the question, is your, does your program work for small businesses as well? Great question. Okay. Great question. So we've got three platforms. We've got one version for individuals that they, they don't own a home, right? When we first launched this program many years ago, we had a one size fits all. You had to own a home, and you had to be able to qualify for a home equity line of credit. Well, that was great for those that could, but that eliminated six or seven out of 10 people out of the equation for one of those reasons. Now we've got three platforms, John. We've got one for individuals that don't own a home. Maybe they just have a car loan or credit card debts or student loans. That was one of the biggest reasons we came out of that platform because when we all went to school, we might have had a 10, 20, 30, 40 thousand dollar student debt. Now people have 100, 150, 200 thousand dollars. So that's designed for that audience. The second program is our primary marketing product, and that's for individuals they own a home. They could have an unlimited amount of debt, but they're capped at three mortgages. Then we've got another version for like investors for commercial application. They could have up to 99 properties. I helped a, a business owner recently that had. In the last six months, one had 30, one had 41 properties and one had 32 properties. We saved each one of them over seven figures just in interest alone. So if somebody has any kind of revenue stream and they have any sort of debt obligations, we can make that work, whether it's personal or professional. It's ubiquitous. It doesn't matter whether or not it's dealing with you and your income or it's dealing with your personal mortgage or it's dealing with the debts of your business. A lot of people in business right now have SBA loans or personal loans, or lines of credit. So yes, we can capture and leverage the use of that money. And now you're putting every dollar you have to work every day until you spend it. So the only real requirement is our potential prospect would have to be 18 years old for all the obvious legal reasons. They'd have to have debt naturally. They have to want to get out of debt. And they have to have at least $1 of discretionary income. Now, the more that they have to work with, of course, it's going to help the result. But literally, we can gamify the process to leverage every dollar they have by being able to cancel interest they otherwise would have paid. Literally help them bank like a bank. And that's a really, really, really powerful part of our program. In fact, it's so efficient 
It'll, it'll literally reduce the overall weighted interest you have on every debt you have, including your mortgage, to generally between one and one and a half percent. So you get all these people beating down the doors of banks to re refinance for 3%, and mm -hmm. we're showing them that's fine if they need to do that. We're not saying they shouldn't. But literally now, without even having to do that, every debt they have, car loan, student loan, personal loan, credit card debt, mortgage, we're able to reduce that overall weighted effective interest to somewhere between one and one and a half percent. If you can eliminate 60, 70 percent of that interest, you can pay a lot more money to principal and right. therefore pay that debt off faster and build equity faster along the way. Wow. Okay. That sounds great. That sounds great for our business listeners. Um, another question for you. I'm coming to you and I'm dead for it. Yeah. I've always, this is personal, I always wanted to open a bed and breakfast. Nice. I like it. Always wanted, that is all I always wanted to. Maybe not right right now, Johnny, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what if I come to you for advice? Yeah. For someone who's ready to explore this opportunity and get into this business, what advice would you give me as a foundation for financial success through this? Great, great question, actually, especially right now with what's going on in the world. I, I would say a couple of things. First, and I'll give you a scenario. Uh, I, I deal with people that are just struggling to get by, and I deal with people that are pretty wealthy. But even the wealthier people, surprisingly, do carry debt because rates are so low. So even if they had a you know, a quarter million dollar mortgage or a half million dollar mortgage, even if they had the money socked away, just for argument's sake, well, why would they want to take that money away from working for them as a retirement account or whatever they have to pay off that debt? Sure, get a low interest rate loan. But now we're able to use the same cash flow they have to eliminate it. Same example in a business scenario. Let's say you're gonna open a bed and breakfast. Maybe not right here in 2020, but let's say a year from now when things calm down a little bit and actually people can actually go to your right. restaurant. Right. Well, let's say you did that a year from now. Now, you probably have the money saved and could you take the 50,000 or 100, 150,000, whatever it may cost to open that, right? It could be, depending on how elaborate you wanna make it. And you yeah. have good taste, so I think I have a feeling you might make it a pretty nice <laughs> restaurant. So we'll probably be going there too, okay? But the point is, if you had the money, even if you did, would it make sense to put that at risk like that when that could be your retirement funds? Probably not. So it probably makes sense to secure some sort of financing. It would just make mathematical sense. It would be prudent. You'd have some deductibility on the use of that money, et cetera. We would probably use this particular platform to help them not only eliminate that debt faster, build equity more quickly, but even from a general standpoint, you know, we say that cash is king, but it seems like with whole COVID, we're trying to make it like cash is an evil thing. I'm still an old cash is king kind of guy. I think that it's always going to be important for in our lifetime anyway. But I think depending on the scope of your question, as it relates to our vertical, yes, I would say securing financing and using a system like this to get those debts paid off because you're going to have cash flow and being able to leverage the use of your own money that the bank is normally using to your advantage to eliminate would be a great rate wise strategy. And then we could have a whole other conversation about other things strategically that might be advantageous to uh, deploy as far as some good financial strategies. But you, you guys do something that's unique. I was thinking a lot about it after we spoke. You know, even with us, to be honest with you, Johnny, I don't deal directly with the consumer quite as much, but we're always trying to leverage our technology through the conduit of good qualified people, organizations, associations, regional and national companies, financial professionals mortgage brokers, you know, loan officers, real estate agents, insurance agents, planners, advisors, CPAs, because they already have credibility. They've already worked so hard to develop that warm relationship with their clients. It makes it a lot easier for us to, to be able to introduce what we do. It's like online dating, which is the worst thing in the world, okay? Because you never know who they are, their profiles, all these fake, whatever. But if you and your wife invite me over to a house party, and you introduce them to somebody, I got a lot less resistance. I can see them face to face. I know you've endorsed them. So we operate very much the same way. I think one of the reasons we've had so much success is we saw that it was prudent to rely upon people that already have the credibility. They've already developed that trusted source relationship, and it makes it a lot easier for us to be a complimentary partner. So I think that's why I applaud you guys for what you do, because you have a great audience. You have people that are saying, as a business owner, but also as a consumer business owner, how do I write my own ship? How do I become a better steward of my money and put myself in a better position for not just my family, but to help my business thrive and grow and survive these kind of difficult times? You know, when COVID first happened, honestly, I think everyone went into panic mode for about 30 days. We thought everybody was going to die. The sky was going to fall. Everybody's going to lose their businesses. 
But after that kind of subsided, April occurred, and the most bizarre thing happened we did not expect. Our sales went like crazy because it was a wake-up call. It was the first time since 2008, 9, 10 that people thought, when money's flowing good, we don't think about it too much. All of a sudden, things get tight, and it's a wake-up call. We go, you know what? I better budget my money. I better be yes. a better steward of my finances. I better get out of debt, save money, and build equity. So I think that's one of the reasons I was so excited to have a chance to be part of your program because people like you have been the flag bearers of being a stand for the consumer, a stand for small business. And it's just a privilege to be able to develop and cultivate those kind of synergistic relationships because it's such a hand in glove opportunity where we give somebody hope and they basically got a financial coach that goes home with them that they don't have to pick up and call anybody. They can actually see where they are in real time. And I think that gives them a better ability to plan and budget for their business as well. Because a lot of times, you know how it is when you're a small business owner, you're paying your office phone before your home phone. Yeah. You're paying that electric bill there before your home. And people don't understand that too much. You know, I've been fortunate to do well and live on the beach now, but I remember sleeping in my car and walking to work and sleeping on the floor of my office because I had to keep that open before I could live my life. And nobody knew about that story until I got way past it and was successful and told my mom about it one day when I was watching The Pursuit of Happiness with her Ooh. and that scene where he's in the subway. And everybody's trying to, and he starts, and all of a sudden I'm watching with my mom and I started bawling and I'm not a weepy guy. And my mom's like, what is going on? And I told her the story and she said, why didn't you tell me, Richard, we would have helped you. I said, no, you would have crippled me. And I had to go through that tough experience on my own and it shaped me. And from that moment forward, I said, I'm going to use this opportunity as a way to be able to reach more people and have that kind of impact because I know what that feels like. And those were those were dark days. And there's a lot of the people on that are going to hear this message right here. They're wondering how they're going to keep their doors open another day. They're wondering how am I going to not just keep my employees working, keep my business open, but feed my own family. So being able to provide a little bit of hope there and a little bit of a strategy and a real successful plan, it's the greatest feeling in the world, Johnny. Oh, that, that is awesome. Richard, that is so awesome. Great, it's great to have you on our program today. Um, I would like to say a couple of things here to the business audience out there. Even though we're going through a pandemic experience, and even though it may boom for your business, or you think it may be boom, we have Richard and we have Greg on the line here to offer hope, financial hope, that can get you to the next level that can get you past the pandemic so that you can have a life that you want. Because most of you out there who have businesses, open your business because you want to give the community hope. You want to be a part of the community. You want to make the community better. And so by doing that, you have to make your own business better as well. So let's start by connecting with people who provide hope for your business, even in the midst of a problem that we're going through now. Um, so, Greg, so Richard, if they can give us some information on how um, they can the business community can get in contact with you should they need your service. Absolutely. I'll, I'll let uh, Greg provide some contact information there. Perhaps we might even provide a link that we can connect with the podcast recording or whatever the case may be if you Absolutely. want to do that. Um, but, uh, Greg, if you want to uh, go ahead and feel free to provide your contact number. Greg is one of our, our right hands. He kind of helps direct traffic for us. He's very, very pivotal in what we do. My business partner, Greg McCullough, helps to do all the savings analysis report, the customized report for the clients. I kind of do more of the business development side. And Greg is one of the guys that really helps to kind of create those opportunities, as he did on this call today, for us to do that. So, Greg, perhaps you could find, provide your email address and your phone number, and then you could help to kind of help direct that to us. And, and we'll do what we can to help support you. Sure. It's Greg Fetterman. Uh, my phone number is real simple, 954-757. Four four. four. Is so that again, Greg? Seven, seven four four. It's seven nine five four seven five seven four 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 four. And what's my your email address again? My email address is a little more difficult. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's Gregory G R E G O R Y because that's my real name. Dot Fetterman F is in Frank. E-D-E-R-M-A-N, and you can email us or call me, and we'll be happy to provide you a complimentary uh, analysis to show you when you'll be out of debt 
approximately when you'll be at uh, approximately how much money we can save you and then when you'll be able to retire and approximately how much money you will have to retire i don't know how you can beat this it's completely complimentary and you may as well get up when you're going to by the way greg i don't know that you finished your email is it a dot com or what was it after your oh it's gregory dot fetterman at gmail dot com in case that's, 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 didn't finish it. Sorry. That, that's, that's for, i want to make sure for sure and and i just wanted to take a moment too and and paul thanks so much for helping to do the logistics for us and johnny i i truly think that uh, sometimes we do meet people for a reason and uh, i apologize i wasn't able to get back to you uh, a little bit earlier in the correspondence but i'm truly thankful uh, I sound like an intense guy, but I'm, I'd probably give my kidney to my cat if she needed it. I'm a, I'm a pretty soft hearted guy. And, uh, these are how we change the world. You know, it's, it's using the leverage of audiences that really we can make an impact and introduce these kind of solutions, especially at these kind of times. And, you know, I, I'd like to offer this suggestion in lieu of what happened to my friend, you know, when things are bad, you know, when things are good, they're never as good as they seem, unfortunately. Right. But when they're bad, they're also never as bad as they seem, and they are never as hopeless. And I think that after pretty much everybody on this call probably has survived what we went through in the Great Recession before, and we will we will pull together as a community uh, and as business owners, and we will get through this too. We'll be a little worse for the wear in the short term, but we'll be wiser. And hopefully we use it as that opportunity to create that little paradigm shift that makes us go, you know what? No more, and I'm not gonna overspend. I am gonna manage my life better, and I am gonna have a future that can make a difference for me and my family and so forth. And, and I really believe in that. I believe that, uh, you know, that buying back America one family at a time. And I think starting with small business owners, because sometimes we do a lot of beating up of business owners. They're the ones that employ the vast majority of people in our country. And they're the backbone of our country. And we've got to figure out ways that we can do a better job of helping them out. You're muted. There and, you go. And my, and my condolences to you and you and your friend and his family. Um, please accept my condolences for that. But yes, um, thank you so much for the services you provide. I can't say that enough because like you said, in times like this, we have to band together as a community, not just as a business community, but as a loving business community where we can love each other enough to say, hey, you know, if you're successful, then we're all successful. And if we think like that, then we'll have a better community and then we'll get past this pandemic even more so. Your information for our business office listeners out there, the information to reach these um, reach the prestige equity group will be posted on site. So you'll be able to look at it there and click on it and you leave. <laughs> okay. All right. So in other words, for our business, I have one last thing for you is that please register for the Miramar Business Pulse. It is our online subscription that you can get information from as far as financial aids, how does how those things are provided for you, information about and resources on building your businesses, um, events, webinars, and everything that's going on inside the city are available to you on that. How do you get there? You um, it is called the link is called miramarfl.gov backslash business pulse. Again, this is Johnny Douglas, your host, signing off. Until next time, stay connected.